Welcome back. In this, our final video in the execution control series, we'll be taking a look at protected evaluation, which is just simply a way of trapping errors. So we've seen in all our modules so far, whenever we come across an error, um, KDB will halt the code execution. So no further statements are executed. Um, so in some cases and more likely in the real world, we might just want to log the errors and continue through the execution rather than completely halting our script or function. Um, and that's entirely obviously use case based, depending on whether you'd want to halt the execution or just log that an error has happened. Um, so when you want to do this logging of errors, you would use protected evaluation. So this is similar to a try catch statement in some other more traditional programming languages. So to do this, we can use the trap at functionality and that's our at character that we have seen many times already. And this is another overload of it. So if we just head over to our at on our overloaded glyphs page, we'll see we're looking at this one here, which is trap at now. Okay, so the syntax of trap at is, um, it looks like functional notation and we pass in an at at the beginning. Then we have three parameters where the first one is a function. Now this must be a monadic function where, so it only can take one parameter. Um, then our second parameter is our arguments to that function. And then our third one is the expression that we want to execute when it fails. Um, and in this example here, we're calling it this error function. So let's look at the sign keyword and test this out. So if we run sign on something like one, we get a result of 0.84. So that's executed fine. But if we run sign on a symbol, for example, we get this evaluation error of type. So if we didn't want to hold the execution and we just wanted to log that, we could do something like this. So using our trap at functionality, we're passing in sign as our monadic function, then symbol as our arguments. And then this here is our error function or basically thing we want to execute when an error happens. So we're passing in a function here. It takes one parameter. Um, so any function we pass in here as our error function can only take one parameter. Um, and we're passing it a standard error signal and then we're also joining on the error itself. So the input to this function here will actually be the string of the error that's raised during execution. So in this example here, it's type. So let's run this and see what happens. So you see here we get our standard error message with the type error added on. Um, also note, if we didn't have this error happening, what would happen is we just get normal execution of the function. So if we just did sign of one, it would never get into this part here. Um, so this is just for the cases where it does fail. Um, and we didn't even need to do anything with this error. We could just output a string message on its own like this. Um, so it's entirely up to the user um, and you don't even have to pass that within a Lambda. We're not using that error function here. So you can see we can just pass this string message here. So you can either have a string or you can have a function that takes one parameter, which is the um, a string of the error that's raised during this execution when an error happens. Okay, so just making that point again, the error function is not special um, and we can do something like this. So I've mentioned a few times there, it must only um, take one input, but when we, we have multi-parameter functions, um, we could get around this by using a projection, for example. So let's take this as an example. So if I've got an argument here, let's put this back to symbol. And I'm saying, I'm gonna create this handle error function and it's gonna do a few different things. It's gonna print a standard error, the string of the incoming argument, the type of the incoming argument, and then also the error. So you see I'm using two parameters here. I've got arg and then error, which are passed into this function. And then I'm creating a projection here, error function, and I'm gonna fix this arg to be symbol here, or this argument. And then I'm gonna actually pass that projection into my trap at function. So you see I'm able to log both the symbol, which is the argument that was fixed in the projection, and then my error itself, which is type here. So that type error is coming from here, which is the um, error from the execution here. Okay, we can also call these protected evaluations from within a function. So you'll see I'm creating a function called protected sign, and then I'm running this within here. And then if I run protected sign on 90, that works fine. And if I pass something that's not gonna work, um, it's gonna log that 
that it doesn't work. And you see, again, I'm getting both the argument, which is break, and then the error message itself, which is type. So you can see, hopefully, that this is very useful when logging function execution, and it gives you the ability to capture and log functions that might break um, and log the parameters that cause that to break, as well as the error itself, which is super useful. Um, okay, so what about when we have functions that we want to create protected evaluation around? but they are not monadic. So they take more than one parameter. Well, we use the multivalent um, trap, which is a dot instead of at. So it looks very, very similar. Instead of the at out here, we have dot, we're passing it our um, non-monadic function. And then we've got a list of parameters here. And then we're passing it the error that we want to execute upon the function failing. So let's just try this function without anything going wrong. So, so you see we get a, a type error here. So when I run it with my protected evaluation, you see I'm getting my error type here. That's, so that's this error joined with the error message itself and then I'm passing a symbol failed. And then when I pass something that is, it's happy with, it executes perfectly, no issues. Okay. Um, so finally, in this module, we just want to touch briefly on some other operators um, that we haven't mentioned up to this point. Um, and the guidance here is that we don't often use them. Um, and when we don't need to use them, we never do. Um, but it are, they are useful to know um, and they're worth knowing that they exist in any case. So the first one of these is the do operator, and it will just allow us to repeat execution n times. Um, so you might see this being used to run a statement X number of times in order to um, test the performance, for example. So I'm using backslash T here, which is running a timer on this here statement. So it's doing this here statement, multiplying A by A, where A is a list of 100,000 long, longs, and um, I'm running that 100 times. So if I run that, you'll see that took 13 milliseconds. Um, and then we're just showing here, this is the way to do it without this do operator. So if we run this with Q syntax, it's backslash T and then we use colon. And then this is our N or our number of times you want to run the expression. We would recommend you use the second option. Um, it's just the more Q way of doing things. And then finally, we do also have a while loop operator in Q. So some of you might be excited to hear that, um, but we don't recommend you use it unless really, really necessary and you can't find another way to do things. Um, so for example here, you can have the syntax while and then while an expression is true, do this following list of expressions. So for example here, I've got X starting at 10. I'm gonna reduce it by one each time. So this, is, this bit here is the same as doing x is x minus one. So we're decreasing it by one every time. And then we're taking the input list, which is or, getting the last two values. So that's the minus two take part. And then we're summing them together. And then we're gonna append them on to that list or that we've inputted. So if we run this function, you might notice that this is the Fibonacci sequence. And you see here, we've summed one and one, and we get two and we've added that on. And then we'd be summing two and one, and then adding that on, which is three here and so on. Okay, so even though these operators exist, um, it's still much more performant um, to use iterators to do this kind of thing. Um, so we don't recommend using while or do in your code, um, but we do just wanna show you it exists um, in the rare case that you may need to use it, okay? So that brings us to the end of our execution control module. We've gone through a lot in this module. It's been a pretty meaty one. Um, we started off just looking at how we can signal errors um, then we looked at the conditional if, um, and then we looked at using if else, which was our dollar instead of the if symbol. And then we seen we can extend out if else to have multiple conditional statements within that. Then we looked at using the vector conditional. So instead of having a singular condition, we have a list of conditions to check. Um, and we seen we used the question mark character to do that. And then we looked at protected evaluation. So being able to trap errors um, rather than having the execution halt or break. Um, and then we just finished up looking at our do and while operators to finish off, okay? So don't forget you have the ability to go up here to our quiz for execution control. 
and you'll find lots of useful exercises to work through to test your knowledge and um, go through everything we've gone through in this module in more detail. Okay, so hope you enjoyed this module and hopefully I'll see you in another module very soon. Thank you.